Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today we're bringing you a first look at the very pinnacle of the new Russian Soviet aircraft carrier line. I know we're all super excited. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tier 10's Admiral Nakimov. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I'm sure I'm sure the comment section will absolutely tell me. You stupid American English speaker, how dare you mispronounce this word that is not from your native language. But anyways, that's where we're at today. Guys, this is Nakimov. Now, of course, Tier 10 is a long and infamous place for aircraft carriers and World of Warships going all the way back to the ridiculous midway way back at the game's launch when it was just stupidly, grossly overpowered, you know, able to basically like, oh, um, I zoned into a game in a midway and I... I choose you for deletion, Tier 10 Battleship, and that would take usually about four to five minutes. Um, tier 10 carriers have had, had a lot of ups and downs since then, and uh, as we've seen through the Soviet, uh, looking through the line up to this point, Wargaming has kind of is trying to sort of bring back the Alpha Strike functionality of carriers here in the, uh, the Russian line, but they're trying to do it by making the planes incredibly fragile. So... I have not played these ships. I haven't actually even faced off against one of these ships in battle. So it remains to be seen whether or not this is working. But literally, even just this morning, Wargaming has been uh, in here tweaking the numbers on some of these ships. So they're obviously seeing data from the super testers that they're honing and honing things in. And we're going to point those changes out as we go through. But let's have a look at the ship. Starting off like you do with survivability, Nakimov here coming in at 67,100 hit points. This is not best in tier, but it's very, very competitive. Midway, uh, Midway beats this out by about 500 HP, but that's fine, right? It's, it's a pretty solid amount of health for a high tier aircraft carrier. 25% torpedo protection, again, not best in tier. That still falls to audacious, is 34%, but very competitive. Midway 25, the both German carriers, 22%. This is fine, totally reasonable, uh, not, not outrageous. Because we like to, let's have a quick look at the armor. 50 mils of deck armor here. Definitely uh, Russians kind of starting to get into the game here, starting to pay attention to the value of that deck armor. Um, we'll have a look at some of the other carriers at 210 in a minute because I don't remember their deck armor off the top of my head. Uh, 25 mils here, uh, sorry, 125 millimeters on the starboard belt. Do we balance it? No, 150 millimeters on the port belt. So literally every Soviet aircraft carrier, every Russian aircraft carrier has an imbalanced belt. If you are shooting at it from the, the side with the island on it, you are shooting at a thinner belt than if you're giving you're shooting at the side uh, opposite the island. So they're, all their islands are, are starboard side. So if you're shooting at the port side of a Soviet aircraft carrier, you are shooting at the thicker belt. Now, if you're in a battleship, you don't care. If you're in a heavy cruiser, you might care. It depends on depends on the cruiser and it depends on the caliber of shell you're firing. So just keep that in mind, that the starboard belt is always a little thinner on a, on a 6, 7, and 8 Soviet aircraft carrier, 6, 7, sorry, 6, 8, and 10 Soviet aircraft carrier than it is on uh, the, uh, the starboard side. The, sorry, the, yeah, the, the port belt is thicker than the starboard belt. Um, just because I want to, let's have a quick look at some of her comp competition in terms of deck armor. I'm just curious here. Let's have a quick look at... Oh, not submarines. I need tier 10 carriers. There we go. All right, so let's have a look at Midway. What is Midway's deck armor? Come on. There we go. No, what are you doing? Get out of here. All right, armor layout. What do we got? 87 for Midway. We looked at Nakimov. What is Hakuryu? Hakuryu. 95. I think the Germans are on the low end. The Germans are quite low, aren't they? Yeah, 50. Also 50. <clears throat> the, the British will have their fancy um, multi multi variance one. Yep, 102 in the middle. Steps out to 38, 25 with the extremities. Roosevelt will be the same. Okay. All right, so so Nakimov kind of on the low end here of, of the deck armor. 50 mils there uh, because, uh, just because, that's how they designed the ship. So the, she'll, she'll, take, she'll take bomb full pins from certain nations. Um, I'm actually wondering if Audacious's level bombs are among that. And they are not. Those bombs have 41 mils of penetration. So like we saw at Tier 8, You've, you've got enough deck armor to shrug off the level bombs, but basically everybody else's dive bombers will penetrate this thing if you can catch her out. Speaking of catch her out, let's look at maneuverability and concealment. 31 knots on the surface, uh, 100 and, uh, a huge turning circle, 1160, and a 17.1 second rudder shift. She handles like an aircraft carrier. These are not numbers to get excited about. 31 knots, just as an FYI, is the slowest tier 10 aircraft carrier by a full knot. She does trail Audacious and the Germans in this category. It's, I mean, she still has plenty of speed, 
But remember at tier 10, there are ships that have got 45, 50 knots of speed to play with on the surface. Obviously, <laughs> Nakimov is not outrunning these ships. So, um, you know, just like you always see, it's it's important it's important to uh, to maintain your positional awareness in a high tier aircraft carrier. Fifteen point one base detection on the surface. Full stealth rig will get her down to eleven point nine. Remember that full stealth rig includes the hidden menace skill, which is currently busted. Hopefully they're fixing it. They say they're fixing it soon, so we'll see. Um, you can get her down to eleven point nine on the surface. That's not best in tier, but it's very competitive. Um, she is still behind the Germans at 11 kilometers and Audacious at 11.6, but ahead of the Americans and the Japanese. So that's nice to see. Now, her aerial detection is quite large, 13.4. Um, that will absolutely play in. Um, opposing planes will easily spot this thing on the surface, giving your battleships a chance to take a pot shot at her and see what she can, you know, see. see. We'll test that armor scheme out, shall we say. A defense, um, definitely, definitely some things to like here, but some things to maybe be a little concerned about. All right, so we'll talk about this. Long range aura, or I should let's start with flak. She puts up ten flak puffs. This is massive. All right, puts up a lot of flak. That flak hits hard. Eighteen ninety per puff. Ten puffs in that outer ring of six kilometers. This is very competitive, right? Um, this outer ring hits even harder than midway's outer ring, and midway's outer ring is nothing to sneeze at. Okay. Uh, the continuous damage in that ring, 270 DPS, not quite best in tier. Technically, Hakur, you still, still more than this, but it's only a couple of points, right? This is, this is a really, really solid outer ring, and that's a whole lot of flack you got to deal with, okay? Um, on the back of these quad-barreled 130-millimeter mounts, hmm, I wonder where we've seen these before. Smolensk! <coughs> um. Anyways, so yeah, there you go. A little bit of a high-tier Soviet anti-aircraft. And then her middle ring on the back of these quadruple 57-millimeter mounts, she's basically got two forward and two aft on each side of the ship. Um, these basically make up her middle aura, which is on the low side for the tier. Um, is it worse than tier? No, it's not quite worse than tier, but only by a couple of points, okay? She has no inner ring. Now, this is hardly abnormal for a high-tier carrier, okay? The only Tier 10 carriers with inner AA rings are the Americans. Midway has a pretty solid one. Um, um, uh, Roosevelt is, a, is quite a bit less. They are the only Tier 10 carriers with inner AA bubbles. It's, you're not really missing much. Most carriers by this point pack that punch into the flak, the outer ring, and then they just drown the thing in mid-range mid AA and dare you to do something about it, Okay. So yeah, um, Nakimov follows this exact same uh, exact same formula. Overall, her A aura is not quite worse than tier, but it's definitely on the low end when you put her. Well, I, I say that, that's not fair. The Americans blow everybody out of the water in this category, right? When you take the Americans out of the equation, I'd say Nakimov's is competitive, right? It's it's about where everybody else is, right? The the full on AA is fairly comparable to the other com the other competition at tier ten carrier. And, of course, the 130mm um, Smolensk guns here uh, do actually form her secondary battery out to a range of 7.3 kilometers. If you're a destroyer, you probably don't want to run afoul of these things just because, well, you've seen what a Smolensk can do. Now, they are a little bit imbalanced, okay? If you're approaching from the starboard side, she has four of these mounts. If you're approaching from the port side, she only has two. So, again, guys, this is a carrier that if you are attacking it on the surface, particularly if you are a lighter unit, such as a destroyer, the direction of your approach matters, okay? Keep this in mind, okay? From the port side, you have more armor to deal with, but less secondaries. From the starboard side, you have less armor, but more secondaries. So I'll let you guys decide, depending on the ship you're driving, what that matters, but just keep that in mind if you run one of these things down on the surface. There is a difference. It is not symmetrical in terms of how you approach one of these things to attack it. All right, enough about the hull. Let's talk about the planes because it's a carrier and that's why we're all here. Take a look at her attack aircraft, the rocket squadrons all the way at the stern here based on the Levochkin, I think, is how you pronounce that? The LA-9. Now, Nakimov has a couple of interesting things going on with her rockets. Well, more than one. First off, she puts more rocket planes on her deck than any other tier 10 aircraft carrier. Her reserves on deck there are 24 planes. That includes, that is after today's changes, and we'll talk about those changes as we go forward. They aren't reflected in port yet, but we're going to talk about them, okay? She can put up a total of 41 of these planes over the course of a match, but fully, well, that's not fully buffed. Fully buffed, it'll be higher than that, but she can put a lot of these in the air. The difference, they have basically like tier 6 health. They have less than 1,100 HP per plane, so flak really, really hurts these planes. The squadron health 
is garbage, less than 9,000 HP. They are quite quick. Well, I'd say their speed is competitive. 168 knots there, you see, <clears throat> is fairly competitive. Midway coming in at 176, Rick Tofen at 172, um, Hakuryu at 165. So it, it's competitive, let's say. She puts eight planes up. The, all of those planes form the attack run. Four rockets per plane. All of it going downrange makes for a potential alpha strike of a mind-blowing, but not realistic, 130,000 damage. Now, those that's if you get full damage out of the rockets, which of course you don't. Full penetration means you'll get about th a thirty, about a third of that damage. So a full alpha strike, you're probably looking at around forty-ish thousand damage. It's still larger than anybody else's alpha strike, assuming you land all those rockets. What would prevent you from getting that? Well, for starters, rockets, right? We've all seen the recent rocket changes basically turn rockets into a crapshoot. You have no idea what you're going to get, and they're much more challenging to lead than they used to be, so maybe we'll see. Um, against a battleship, let's say, you're, let's say you're firing these against a large capital ship type target, um, the 40 millimeters of penetration means, depending on where they land, you're going to shatter some of these, right? Against most battleship superstructures, you will land full pens, those will hurt. Um, some decks, I'm looking at you, say, Republic or Thunderer, um, you will get full pens out of, um, but you won't, you won't against the likes of, say, a Kremlin, those will just all shatter. 22% fire chance, pretty noteworthy, right? This is not quite Tiny Tim level, that's 33%, but it's way better ahead of everybody else's rockets in terms of, in terms of that, okay? That's nice to see. Um, and the individual rocket damage per is, you know, only 4,000. Again, that's not better, that's not best in tier, the Tim's run away with this at 5,400, but hmm, hmm. So these rockets, like we've seen up to this point, they're going to be really good for potentially lighting fires on capital ships. They're going to be really good for potentially slapping around heavy cruisers. Let me back that up. Well, no, heavy cruisers, not super cruisers, right? Um, and they're going to be almost impossible to land against destroyers because that's just how Wargaming wants it. So there you go. Um, she has lots of these. Expect you will, <clears throat> when you play Nakamov, with these kinds of reserves, you will be using these planes a lot. So just get used to them when you get here. Um, this is this is going to be the plane she has the most of over the course of a match. They regenerate the fastest, and you're just going to be using quite a bit of them. You're going to lean on these pretty heavily. She's going to play a little like Enterprise in that regard, I think, just because she has so many of them and they come back so quickly. Moving up to the torpedo bombers, we have the Poly, Poly, Polycarab, Poly. Polikarpov. Polikarpov. There we go. The Polikarpov VIT-2. Again, the Soviets gawping for a twin-engine um, bomber-style uh, uh, aircraft to put the torpedoes in the water. Now, let's talk about what you're seeing in port, uh, the display here that is different. For starters, the planes on deck have been reduced from 24 to 18. So they're cutting back her torpedo reserves, also because they've cut back the size of the attacking squadron. You see there it's listed on 8 as 8. It has been reduced to seven as of this morning in testing, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, they're, they're trying to bring this alpha strike down to something that they feel is apparently a little more realistic, not happy with where it is at the moment. They have not changed any of the other parameters, okay? The torpedoes still move 41 knots with a 5,200 uh, 5, damage per torpedo. Um, <clears throat> that is not worst in tier. It's not best in tier. It's, it's, it's kind of just there. The Japanese still absolutely run away with this category in terms of damage per torpedo, but of course they only put two into the water. The potential alpha strike out of these damage, out of these, out of this torpedo salvo with seven planes, does actually rival that of Franklin D. Roosevelt. Um, FDR's or torpedo alpha coming in a little less than thirty-four thousand. Nakimov's here a little over thirty-six. So they're comparable, assuming that you land all the torpedoes. Now Nakimov torpedoes should be easier to land. They do move faster than FDR's, but of course Nakimov's planes are made of tissue paper by comparison. 1470 there per plane is absolutely worse than tier. It's not even close. Even Immelman and Richtofen's planes have more health than this. So as we've seen with the Soviet torpedo bombers, it's going to be a question of trying to drop them far enough out that you get, the, you get all the fish into the water, you lead them, they do still have a six kilometer range, and you're trying to put them into a position where whatever battleship is either, either stationary, he's moving very slowly, and you're going to try and lead them to land as many as you can. They do have a, what you don't see in port here, these torpedoes have a 39% flood chance. That is comparable to the Japanese, where who are looking at 40% at this tier. Um, Midway, 42. Franklin D. Roosevelt, 33. And the Germans, um, well, let's see. Audacious actually has the best, the best flood chance at tier 10, 51%. But of course, tier 10 is a place where, depending again, depending on what target you're shooting at, the torpedo protection can be pretty extreme. So you might not see a lot of floods. Just keep that in mind. Okay? 
And then lastly, we'll go over a check of the Skip Bombers here, the Sukhoi SU-6. You see there, 1310 health per plane is um, really bad. Yep, as we've been saying, uh, second, you know, third verse, same as the first. This is worst in tier, okay? Um, 125 knots of speed, very, very slow. Even slower than midway, not quite as slow as FDR, but not far. Uh, we didn't talk about it, but the torpedo bomber speed is also worst in tier. They are very slow, okay? Um, eight planes per squadron. This is, um, yep, this, this is staying. What they've done is they've reduced, uh, you see there that you have 24 planes on deck. Just this morning, they've cut that back to 20. So they're reducing the, the deck reserves while keeping the squadron size the same. So Nakimov, after the, this morning's changes, she puts up eight rocket planes, seven torpedo planes, and eight skip bombers. So the skip bomber thing here hasn't changed. Um, all of those planes attack, each bomb, 8,700 damage, 54 millimeters of penetration, potential alpha strike of just under 70,000 damage. The alpha strike is actually comparable to Midway. Um, when the Midway's dive bombers, uh, of course, dropping all those bombs, their alpha strike is about 67,000. This is about two or 3,000 damage more than that. The difference, of course, Midway can do that four times with a single squadron, and her planes are quite healthy at over 2,000 health per plane. Nakimov doesn't suffer this problem, okay? Um, these bombs obviously primarily meant for, you know, slow moving targets, stationary targets, things that you can easily catch broadside. I will say, like we've said before, I've seen what these things, I've watched videos and stuff. You watch people deploy these uh, like off of Emblemen or whatever against destroyers. They do mean things, but you won't land all the bombs. You might land two, you might land three, depending on the destroyer in question. But if you do, that destroyer will absolutely feel it. They hurt, they hit like trains. Okay. So, um, yeah, the skip bombers to me are definitely going to be an acquired skill. I have not ever played, I think I'm actually, that's not true. I think I've played Immelman once. So the skip bombers, just observationally from watching other people play, they seem very easy to land against big battleships. The heavier the cruiser, the easier they are. Against the lighter targets, again, a destroyer, for an example, or a light cruiser, it looks like they just get more difficult to use because, of course, he's going to maneuver against you and try and turn out and so on. Um, these, these, like the rockets, should be really good for lighting fires. You'll get some good full pens against the capital ship. So I feel like, a, you, you know, something like a ship like Nakimov and, and the Soviet cruisers, Soviet battle uh, carriers, I'll get it out in a minute, in general, are going to play a little like Audacious. Like the Brits, the British carriers have always looked to me like they want to lean on that damage over time effect, right? You look at Audacious, which has the best flood chance of, of any carrier at tier 10. You want to be able to come back in, um, you know, get a flood out of the torpedoes, force them to damage control, come back in, level bomb the target, try and get a fire. The, the trick is that Audacious's bombs shatter against so many things that it's very difficult to get the fire. Nakimov here seems like she's going to reliably get the fire where she's going to struggle a little bit maybe is to get the flood. Her torpedoes are a little, a little, maybe easier to land some, but less flood chance. So she'll struggle a bit more to get that flood out of it. Maybe you, or vice versa, right? She'll have an easier time. She looks like maybe he's kind of audacious in reverse. Audacious, easier time getting the flood, harder time getting the fire. Nakimov here, probably easier time getting the fire, harder time getting the flood. But the Soviet carriers do strike me as something that when you want to go pick on a big capital's target, you're going to take losses because of his anti-aircraft fire and how weak your planes are. And you're you're going to want to try and stack some, stack some dots. Again, this is just me speculating looking at looking at numbers i might be way off base here i haven't played these ships i don't know but that's just kind of how they stack up here as i kind of give them a, give them a glance and that's that's what they look like to me as we kind of glance at the hull anyway guys there's our look at our first look at tier 10 russian aircraft carrier nakimov hope you enjoyed that wash your hands be safe and i'll catch you next time